You may have more takers than children. Is something special, anything like donuts? <laughs> yeah, I should have been, really should have been. You know, isn't it appropriate that on 9-11 we sing Easter songs? It is. And thank you guys, excellent choice of music for this morning, just absolutely perfect. It really is. I remember well, don't you? I was driving down Veterans Boulevard. I just dropped Chris off at Amistad Academy. For those who remember Amistad Academy, I was headed back over to our home in Cunha, and I heard in a radio, an airplane has flown into one of the towers at the World Trade Center. They said it was, a, it was a small plane, probably a private plane. But by the time I got to the bridge... They'd already realized that that was not the case. And so we remember, don't we? Appropriate that we would. Do you remember also how it drew us all together? That tragedy, tragedy pulled us all together. And, uh, you know, Kelly and I lived in a comfortable home in Acuna. We weren't afraid to live in Mexico. We were glad to be so. But soon as the second plane hit the second tower... I said, Kelly, I bet they're going to close the border. We better go get back on the other side. Know why? Not because we're afraid of Mexico, because our kids were on the other side. And so it, it draws us together. Uh, tragedies even like that. Romans 12, 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And for 15 years, we've been able to see that, haven't we? Even out of evil that God makes things good. You know, it's so appropriate that on 9-11, we also celebrate the Lord's Supper. You know, we remember 9-11. We celebrate the Lord's Supper. Two different things, aren't they? Both appropriate, both good, both good things. And so, My light went out, so I guess that means my battery went out, right? Probably so. See? No light. <laughs> but this one works. Sorry, guys, you thought you were going to get to go home early, didn't you? <laughs> this morning, uh, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper, but we're not going to do it as a tangent to the service as something else tagged on or something oh yeah we need to do this every once in a while so this is going to be central it's going to be central the message is going to be about the Lord's Supper and uh, the Lord's Supper is going to be central to the message because the Lord's Supper as we practice what the Lord invited us to do so when we share this cup and we share this bread we are all you know, each of, you know, there's not one preacher today. There's a hundred of you. We all proclaim the resurrection when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. So we're going to do that together in just a few minutes as a part of the, as a, not as a part of the service, but as the central service itself. Okay, if you would uh, go ahead and look. I appreciate Lori. Uh, typing up this morning's text. It's there for you in, in the bulletin. If you would like, of course, you can look in your Bibles too. There may be a chance that we would have a, a different translation or two this morning. So uh, uh, I will be reading from the NIV. It's the one, New International Version, the one that's here in your hands in, in the bulletin. And actually, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to read from it because the font's bigger, see? <laughs> but I'm going to do so with my Bible open to the same passage so we won't have any confusion about what we're reading, that we're reading from the Word of God. And I would like for us to read through it together. It's usually a little cumbersome. We tried this a few times, and it usually doesn't work very good when we try to read out loud together. I guess you are timid or something, or or uh, whatever, but I will read it out loud, and you follow along, and then let both of those speak to all of us as we do so, okay? What we're going to read is a story about the very first, what we now call communion, the very first Lord's Supper, and it was in the last week in Jesus' life, 
In fact, it was the very night that he was betrayed. He's even going to reference that. You know, he knew what was going to happen before it happened. The betrayal didn't take him by surprise. 9-11 didn't take him by surprise. And so he's even going to reference that which was about to happen and even how and by whom. And so even as we read this story, great confidence comes in knowing that uh, you know, we worship an eternal God that knows the future before it happens. And has already got it taken care of. Read along with me, okay? Here's the story on that fateful night. And uh, beginning in, chapter, in verse 14 of Luke chapter 22. When the hour came, Jesus and his disciples reclined at the table. It's the way they had their meals then. And he said to them, look at this. I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you. Before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. He knew the future in the present. Verse 17. Taking the cup, like we will in just a minute. He gave thanks and he said, take this and divide it among you. Sharing. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He knew the future in present tense. Verse 19. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body given for you. And then there, these are the words, This do in remembrance of me. That statement is why we are doing this today. Verse 20. <clears throat> In the same way after he uh, took the cup saying, this is the cup of my uh, new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed but woe to him, to that man who betrays him. Verse 23, they began to question. You can imagine they would, wouldn't you? Among themselves, which of them it might be who would do this? Verse 24. And not only did they have that discussion, but then a dispute also rose among them. As to which of them was considered the greatest, can you imagine? And Jesus said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lorded over them, and those who exercise authority over them called themselves benefactors. They had titles. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. So there it is. The record of the very first communion, the very first Lord's Supper, and we're doing this today, like I mentioned, because Jesus said to do so. But look at the story. Isn't it interesting? How many of you have noticed that it seems like it's supper time, isn't it? Isn't it supper time that fusses among the kids usually break out? Have you noticed that? <laughs> and it was at this meal time, that this, this meal that commemorated the Passover. It was a Jewish uh, festival. They did this every year, remembering the Passover from the past, from the Old Testament. And uh, there was a fuss. It was the mealtime. And there was a fuss that broke up. Some things seem to never change, do they? And so there they were in this solemn moment, Jesus knowing the future in present tense, knowing exactly what was going to happen. Just hours later, just days later. And then these guys are fussing among themselves. Now, the first reason they fussed, you know, we would have two. Jesus and the disciples are there at the table together. And he makes that statement, the one who's going to betray me, his hand is on the same table that my hand is on today. Can you imagine that? I imagine everybody's going, whoop, <laughs> not me. 
I can imagine each of them drawing their hands back as Jesus said, the hand of one's going to betray me is on the table with mine, with my hand. But you know what? Even knowing the future in present tense, Jesus still served him. What an example, right? Even the one who's going to betray him. And then look at the next thing that, you know, it was, it was not without its tension, this meal that they had together. Then they began fussing about who's the greatest. Yesterday afternoon, after the uh, memorial service for the aborted babies that a number of us attended out at the Knights of Columbus, came back here to the church, and, and Tom and the whole crew of you that was leading that so well, do you, do you hear the verb that I use? Leading that so well, know how they were leading? By serving. I was so proud of you guys. I was so proud to be numbered among you that you served our whole community yesterday in the way that you did. And uh, Jody, how many hours? You just tell me from the time you guys first arrived to the time you went home. What was the length of time? That's what I would have guessed. Six hours. Now see, look at the contrast. The disciples are fussing among themselves about who's the greatest. And they thought greatest meant to be the one who's in charge. And Jesus turned that upside down, didn't he? You know who the greatest are? Those who serve. You guys were a great example of that yesterday. You know, those of you, I don't know, the score of you who helped host our community as we commemorate the life of one who gave his life for the, for the rest. Same thing, wasn't it? Yeah, same thing. So thank you guys for not just coming up here and fussing in front of everybody else about who's in charge. You didn't do that. You served, and you served so well. And, uh, you know, when Tommy and I came in, you guys were serving just like, oh, that's just right. That's just right. And you know what? You were also commemorating the resurrection of the Lord Jesus yesterday as you served. As you served. would we'll do that. You know, some things never change. The New Testament church really did do what Jesus said. This do in remembrance of me. They did it. And they did it. And, uh, but, you know, uh, even in the times that they would do so, it's amazing, those same disputes arose. And Paul addressed it in his letter to the Corinthians. It was a church in a moral mess. And uh, they had some actual moral issues that they were debating that we would be appalled that they would even be debating these things. But So they had a moral mess, but they also had the same stuff going on. Who's in charge around here? They were fussing among themselves who was in charge and who was the greatest and remember, there was one group that said, well, I follow Paul, and the other said, I follow, follow Paulus, and they had polarized themselves, they had chosen camps, and so there was this debate among them even going on. And then, when they would come together for the meal, as is the case today in our own church, you know, when they would come together, there would be, you know, a great deal of variety in the uh, uh, disparity even in the financial resources of those who were present. You know, there were some of means who would come together and some of no means whatsoever. And so they would see the celebration of the Lord's Supper as an opportunity to eat. And so those of means would bring, it was like it was done in cover dish form. They would come and, you know, that's, our Baptists have a deep heritage, do, do we not? We Baptists. And so they would, it would be a covered dish meal, be a home meal that they would have. And uh, then when it came time to... Uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper together. You know, those who had, had means would bring a lot of food. Some would come without any at all. And they'd say, okay, let's begin now and let's line up. And there was a dash for the front of the line. And those who would get there first would pile their plate, heap their plates, and often they would run out before the last people in line would even get their food. Paul is calling them out on that deal. He said, guys, You've, you've lost the point of it. 
You know, the Passover meal that we celebrate now called the Lord's Supper, you know what the point of it is? Remembering the price that was paid that we can even come together. It's not about the food. He had to remind them of that. And so somewhere through the uh, centuries, we've decided, okay, if it's that way, why don't we just make it easy? How many of you as children remember when they would serve the Lord's Supper at your church? That little bitty cracker in that little bitty cup, you'd think, man, I wish we had more. <laughs> Did, am I the only one who felt that way? Yeah. But you know what? That too is a reminder. The reason we don't have more is so we won't miss the point. The point of this is to remember the death and the resurrection of Jesus. It's not to eat. That's why we have such meager servings. So we won't get distracted from the point. So they did. Even in the first century, they had the same kinds of things coming together. But then just the way that God has a way of doing, even though we have differences, we do. We have differences in this room. But what brings us together? You know, Jesus himself brings us together. And we're drawn to him. And I like your company. I'm, I'm glad that we're all drawn to him and that we share this together. I like being with you. But he's the one we're following. And he's the one we commemorate with this meal together. So men, let's do that now. Those of you who are deacons, we'd like to invite all of you to come forward now. And we are going to celebrate together the Lord's Supper. And we'll have a couple of times that uh, when the men are passing out the elements. You know, Paul told the church, the Corinthian church to do this. Make a self-investigation when it's time to share in the Lord's Supper. You know, examine yourself, he said. I used to think that that meant, oh no, to look back at all the bad things that I've done and thinking, oh no, I'm not good enough. I probably shouldn't do this. I'm not good enough. My behavior doesn't match up. But you know what? If it was about behavior, we just soon not pass the plates. Our behavior has nothing to do with it. It's the blood of Jesus that makes us worthy of taking the elements. And so that's why everybody in the room who's a follower of Jesus is invited to join us in this meal. And then he also said, he said, remember if there's anyone against whom you have ought, then to take that into consideration as well. And then make, you, make it your business that after this meal, whether it's a family member, maybe some, an estranged brother or sister or child or parent, somewhere far, far away, then that this meal that brought those men together and brings us together, that we would act on it by even making amends. Those are the two things he asked us to do. Remember why we're doing it. And then to take into account if there's someone who has ought against us. So let's do so now. Okay. Let's do. If there's any other deacons that are out there now, mm -hmm. um, would you, if, 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 if possible, would you come up and those deacons that are not passing out the elements, we will be praying for our congregation mm -hmm. while we pass out the elements. Mm -hmm. Thank you, man. Mm -hmm. Okay.
that large group. We ask now to be with me, partakers in the bread of life, and that we would go out and lift up Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and that because of your Holy Spirit and our obedience, that we would multiply here and lift him up ever higher. And so, Lord, now uh, we eat this, a representation of your broken body that you shed on that cross, the blood. Take it in. And now, the blood of Jesus Christ represented in this cup. Y'all may be seated. Finish up with another story. It's a story that took place on December 24th, 1944, in Germany, Battle of the Bulge. As is the case often in the chaos of war, the, you know, the American and Allied troops have been scattered and some of them have lost their ranks and same had been happening among the German troops as well scattered and, and got away from their groups and there's a group of three American soldiers it was cold it's coming nighttime they saw a little cabin with the light on and smoke coming out of the chimney and they said oh a place maybe to get in out of the cold so they took a risk they went to the cabin and knocked on the door and a German lady answered the door and welcomed them in she was preparing Christmas supper was cooking a chicken so she welcomed them in. They came in, and uh, she was still making preparations for the meal. When a knock came at the door, and the American soldiers all scrambled for their guns. And she opened the door, and sure enough, it was German soldiers, four of them. And uh, the lady made it clear from the beginning, everybody put your guns down. We're going to share this Christmas meal together. And so everybody complied. And even there it was at Christmas time, Jesus still bringing enemies together. And they had that meal together, and then they slept together in that cabin. The next morning, they all left and rejoined their troops. It's what we experienced this morning, brought together by Jesus. Even the differences that we have among us, and brought together by Him. So this is a celebration of unity. And a celebration of dependence because we are dependent on him.